in the previous lesson, we learned how to look around our... We will learn to look how to look around our work plane, right? And now we see, you see we have our work plane right in front of us, right? Okay, so now what, what, are, what, what are we going to do? Now, did you remember that I introduced you to some of the features on this top toolbar? One of this is group. We'll be using this primarily for this lesson. Creating holes. In this project, you will learn how to remove material from another shape using the hole feature. Go on ahead and click next. It's time to create some holes, so let's get started. Drag a blue polygon shape to the work plane and place it in the area outlined in orange. Now, as you remember from the first module or the first lesson, that the orange is where you want uh, something to be placed, right? And you also remember from the previous lesson that this is the basic shapes gallery, the basic shapes gallery, right? So, what do they want? They want a blue polygon shape. So let's go on ahead and scroll down. Do you see a blue polygon? Oh, well, there's a blue polygon. So now what are we going to do? We're going to drag it, left mouse click, drag out to the work plane. Now you can see it automatically superimposes it on the work plane as it, what it would be when you release the cursor. So, so let's go on ahead, get it mostly right, release, and there you have a blue polygon shape. Did you know that you can ch change any shape into a hole tool? Yep, you sure can. Select the polygon by left clicking it, then s and s select the hole option in the inspector window in the near upper right hand corner of the editor window. This is what they call the inspector window. I prefer to call it the uh, drop down toolbar, the properties, uh, the, like the properties. And so you see right now that solid is highlighted. That means that the polygon itself is solid, meaning that it has no hole in it. However, if you say you want a hole, what that means is that you're... What that means is you're basically carving out the entire inside of the polygon. So, but remember that carving out the inside of the polygon, you are not leaving behind a predetermined distance or predetermined thickness of the walls that you're leaving behind. Just pretend that you're leaving behind it. Uh, almost infinitely small thin wall right so let's just go on ahead and click hole so but what's the purpose of this now as you can see our final product does not look like this right this does not look like a wrench right you're missing that uh, initial cutout from this side that usually will take the nut and bolt but well, we'll take the nut right so let's go on ahead and click hole, as it tells us. And what do you see right now? You see that, I'm just going to zoom in right now. There's, you see that it suddenly turned gray, right? You see that turn gray and that it is translucent. This is basically the software's way of saying that this shape has now been turned into a hole. Okay, so how we're going to use this? Let's go, go on and continue to the next step. Now you have both your shapes, but you need to group them to remove the hole material. So how do we group them? Select both objects by pressing and holding the shift button, and then click on each shape with your left mouse button. Um, I would, I am going to discourage you doing this process, just because if you have multiple shapes, uh, if you have more than two or three shapes to select, then this left mouse click while holding on the shift key is kind of tedious, because you have to, uh, you have to have almost hair-like precision accuracy to select each of your shapes. So what I'm going to teach you is another way of doing this. The other way of doing this is you select any place on the work plane other than the shapes, press and hold, drag. You see this red rectangle that you see right here? And when I move the mouse cursor, that automatically adjusts its, uh, um, sorry. It automatically adjusts its height and its width, right? So if you drag it over any part of both of them, release, you see that both of them are actually selected. Now, it might seem that right now only the bot only the wrench is selected, but you can tell if the polygon is also selected because I'm okay, I'm just going to move my workplace using my right mouse click. If there is this dotted line 
right here that stretches up to the same height as the polygon. That means the polygon is also selected. So this is good. So what are we going to do now? It says group them together by clicking the group button in the toolbar menu. Now remember, there's also a keyboard shortcut for this. It's control G. But right now, I'm just going to show you right here, control G, right? So press this, group. And what grouping effectively does is that it takes two objects and it merges them together into a single shape. So for example, if you like, um, for some reason wanted to uh, group, t oh no, no, actually a better example is if you uh, say uh, you have, well, when you're making a hamburger, right? So you have your ketchup, uh, you have your lettuce, I hope you eat lettuce with your hamburgers, uh, your lettuce, and then your buns, your, t your, t your bun, right, that's sliced in half, and then you have your patty, right? So what grouping does is that you're, it takes all of these separate things and it groups them all into one unit, which is a hamburger, right? So you treat that one unit from then on as just a hamburger. You don't treat it as each of its individual units. You don't treat it like, say, oh, this is just a piece of lettuce, right? You treat the entire unit as one hamburger. So this is what we're going to do now. Right now, what we've effectively done is we took our quote-unquote lettuce here and our quote-unquote patty here and our bun, which is not represented, um, and we grouped them together into one hamburger. So now we have this big unit of, yeah, big unit that's all grouped together. Now, how do you know if it's something's grouped? Well, one way of doing this is if if it's a, if if it's the entire thing is just one unit, then if you move it around, it should be able to move all everything that's grouped together as one unit, right? So let's go on ahead and test this. So left mouse click, drag. Actually, sorry, it doesn't seem to be letting me to do this. However, if you were to even just change like this, right? Okay, you see? All of the shapes are moving around with it. Okay, let's go on ahead and go to the next step. Good job, you did it. Now you can see, now you don't see the polygon anymore because remember that was a hole. So that means that literally the polygon served as a hole feature to cut out the proper... Uh, the proper thing for the nut right here, right? So this is where the nut is going to fit in. So now we basically created an entire wrench. Good job, guys. Let's go on and go to the next step. Or the next lesson.